A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After much debate had taken place, Peter got up and said to the apostles and the presbyters, My brothers, you are well aware that from early days God made his choice among you, that through my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness by granting them the Holy Spirit, just as he did us. He made no distinction between us and them, for by faith he purified their hearts. Why then are you now putting God to the test by placing on the shoulders of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we were able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way as they. The whole assembly fell silent and they listened while Paul and Barnabas described the signs and wonders God had worked among the Gentiles through them. After they had fallen silent, James responded, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon has described how God first concerned himself with acquiring from among the Gentiles a people for his name. The words of the prophets agree with this, as it is written, after this, I shall return and rebuild the fallen hut of David. From its ruins, I shall rebuild it and raise it up again, so that the rest of humanity may seek out the Lord, even all the Gentiles on whom my name is invoked. Thus says the Lord who accomplishes these things known from of old. It is my judgment, therefore, that we ought to stop troubling the Gentiles who turn to God but tell them by letter to avoid pollution from idols, unlawful marriage, the meat of strangled animals, and blood. For Moses, for generations now, has had those who proclaim him in every town as he has been read in the synagogue every Sabbath. The word of the Lord. Be proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm not to be moved. He governs the people with equity. Sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you, in your joy might be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
As we continue our Easter journey through the Acts of the Apostles, we, we saw yesterday, and today it comes to a head, so to speak, is the first great problem or controversy the infant church met amongst within itself, which really threatened to disunify and split it apart. And the whole problem was the attitude towards the law. Now, as we well know to the Jews in Jesus' day, and obviously before him, the law was very important, the Torah, the law books of Moses. And then, of course, through the centuries of the Old Testament, more additions were added on to that law. The Jews, as they journeyed through that Old Testament, saw that the law was what they had to cling to. It ensured their survival because over and over again they saw the pattern and when they deviated from the law, they, they strayed away from God and all sorts of horrible things happened to them. But like typical human beings, ourselves certainly not accepted, we always seem to go to extremes. We either go away one way or we go away one other way. We either cling to something with such great tenacity that we strangle it, the letter of the law, so to speak, or we simply turn our backs on it and ignore it. Why is it that we can't have that happy middle ground? We're just not good at that as human beings. It's one of the effects of original sin, I suppose, the weakness of our human nature that we're still struggling with. In the early church then, of course, there was really two camps. There were the early Christians who were first Jews, particularly those in Jerusalem and in the Holy Land there, and many of the Greek-speaking Jews as well. And then, of course, through St. Paul's endeavors and his missionary trips, many, many Gentiles were now also flowing into the church, were being baptized and receiving the Holy Spirit. But some of the more staunch, rigid, conservative Jewish Christians, particularly those who were Pharisees, as the Gospel tells us today, were insisting that these Gentiles, these outsiders, these non-Jews, that they must be circumcised and that they must too follow the law of Moses, the letter of the law. And so that ignited a great controversy. And so St. Paul goes to Jerusalem and as St. Luke relates to us in the Acts of the Apostles, he probably simplified it quite a bit, but the leaders of that early church met and prayed and discussed and discerned what are we supposed to do. And those early leaders of the church, Peter and James, who was the bishop of Jerusalem, after much discussion came to a decision, a compromise, remembering that it is mercy that God desires, not sacrifice. Sacrifice meaning that rigidity of just performing something because that's what we're supposed to do, but rather go to the very heart. And what is the heart of the law? Jesus who said, I've come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Jesus himself who broke the rigidity of the Sabbath when he cured or plucked grain in the field. And the heart of the law is what the gospel is today. Love. The love of God. And the love that we must show one another. What is the two great commandments? Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. And so that rigidity of the law was lifted from the Gentiles. Most scholars say if they had swung the decision the other way, we wouldn't be sitting here today. The church would never have 
been able to sustain itself without the Gentiles because they soon became the vast majority of the church as it grew throughout the world. We too must always examine our attitudes as well. We need the law, yes, it's the structure. But what we must always remind ourselves is that the law cannot save us. It's there simply to guide and to help direct, but it must always have be, its underpinning must always be love. Love. Why are we here today? Out of obligation to the law? Probably not. We're here today because we love. We love one another. And most of all, we love God. Seeking to give glory and honor to God in all that we do and say, we offer our prayers to our almighty God. That our church leaders may be blessed, as were the apostles, to continue to work tirelessly to bring good news of salvation to all the world, let us pray. That the people of the world may put aside their differences and inspired by the Holy Spirit work toward a lasting peace with one another let us pray. That those who are denied the freedom to practice their religion openly may be given the strength to persevere in faith, let us pray. That all who believe in Jesus may work toward unity with one another, treating each other with love, dignity, and respect, let us pray. We pray for all who have died especially in this Mass this morning, we remember the soul of Aaron Werner, and we also remember the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father John A. Holschnecht in 1927, and Father Daniel C. Gilsdorf in 2012. And we pray for all our loved ones, that they may come to share now in the fullness of Easter joy in heaven. Let us pray. Father, all creation, in its radiance and beauty, gives you glory. Hear and answer these many prayers offered to you this day. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.